By mid-December, the Department of Design and Construction had leveled World Trade Center buildings four and five. We're getting ready to fold building six. We're getting ready to fold building six. We're getting ready to fold building six. We have to be very careful how we demolish building six. We were worried about the building six coming down and then damaging the slurry wall, so we wanted that particular building to fall within a certain area. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe this one of things kills this pull. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. In the last few seconds, another building, building number seven, one of the buildings uh, in support of the World Trade Center towers has collapsed. This is no small building, as you can see, at 47 stories. It would stand out in most American cities. After the attack, many smaller explosions rumbled through downtown. This morning, not unlike the World Trade Center Twin Towers, both of which appear to have on the news of what had transpired here in New York City this morning. If you are a New York City firefighter, you are requested to report order to report to your station immediately. Uh, we need the help this morning with the major disaster unfolding in New York City, and uh, the world has changed markedly in a little less than an hour. The windows in the lobby of the North Tower were blown out, and marble panels were blown off of the walls. This was brushed off as damage from a raging fireball that went barreling down the elevator shafts. However, the World Trade Center's core and elevator shafts were hermetically sealed, a.k.a. airtight. The fire could not possibly have had enough oxygen to travel 1,300 feet down, retaining enough energy to destroy the bottom eight floors of the building. On 9-11, New York City lost 343 firefighters at the World Trade Center. Since they were the ones inside the towers before and as they collapsed, I say they've got a pretty good grasp on what happened. I expected to see the damage that I saw in the lobby and, and the people, the bodies, the, pe the burnt people, the injured people. I really wasn't prepared for that. The lobby is about six stories high, and the lobby looked as though a bomb had exploded there. And this, uh, all the glass was taken out. There were 10 foot by 10 foot uh, marble panels that were once walls. Uh, uh, they were loose from the, from the wall of the trade center. Firefighter Louis Caccioli told People Weekly, 
I was taking firefighters up in the elevator to the 24th floor to get in position to evacuate workers. On the last trip up, a bomb went off. We think there were bombs set in the building. If we look at the debris surrounding the World Trade Center, we find a snowfall of fine dust and intact pieces of paper scattered everywhere. If fires were responsible for the collapses, why didn't the papers burn or get shredded to pieces in the pancake collapse? Instead, we see white sheets of paper floating on a cushion of hot air in front of a pyroclastic flow of dust and debris through the streets. Paper and powder. How could it be possible? It appears that the high strength to weight ratio of paper allowed it to survive the energy blast that vaporized all heavy and denser materials. From within the shadows, we can see a bright explosive flash. And if we rewind the tape, a countless series of explosive flashes reveal themselves as responsible for the complete destruction of the inner steel framework. Simple visual evidence is perhaps the best place to start. This genuine building collapse due to an earthquake doesn't resemble the World Trade Center at all. Notice how the cars are crushed but otherwise intact. At the World Trade Center, cars parked nearby were turned into charred wrecks by an intense blast of heat but were not crushed by falling debris. Could traditional demolition explosives produce this blast of intense heat? Clearly, a very powerful energy source was required.
citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The jets fueled for cross-country flights were filled with tens of thousands of gallons of volatile fuel. They were literally flying bombs. <laughs> suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. Now, there are some people in East Tower would typically be in there on a normal business day, and we get about another 5,000 visitors during the course of the entire day. So by 8.39 o'clock, the building should have been full. Terrorism has been alive and well throughout the rest of the world for a very, very long time, and you can point to it in many different places, and it's, it's come to our shores big time now. We need to understand that. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat, but they have failed. Our country is strong.